What's up, guys? Let's talk about coffee. I love coffee. You guys should know by now I love coffee. Um, I am extremely passionate about roasting coffee. Fresh coffee is very, very important to have. But before we continue, let's make some coffee. <laughs> Okay, now that we got coffee, we can talk about coffee. The first thing I want to say is you don't actually have to get fancy expensive brew methods and everything else. The most important part of your coffee experience is the coffee itself. I'm really most passionate about uh, introducing people to coffee just because I was introduced to good coffee one time and I couldn't believe that I had been drinking this other coffee all this time. Um, I just didn't know that there was anything better. and. That's actually fine. Like, if I'm at a gas station and I want coffee, I'll, I'll still buy that coffee, you know? I, I still, you know, you use what you got and you drink what you have. So I started roasting coffee when I was a contractor. I ended up going to a restaurant one time, had an amazing cup of coffee, and thought, why can't I have that at home? So I actually got an espresso machine, and that's really the opposite way you need to go about it. Everybody wants to buy the equipment first. Um, it actually makes more sense to buy good coffee first, use what you got, learn, and go from there. Um, I bought an espresso machine. I struggled with it. I couldn't remotely duplicate the cup of coffee that I had, which I actually had an Americano, which is what I made before I started this video. Um, and so I was frustrated with it. I ended up buying good quality coffee. And I actually had a good cup of coffee. And then I discovered that it was really good in anything I brewed it in. So my biggest problem was actually not having good coffee. You can brew good coffee in a $20 machine if you've got the right, the right coffee to start with. So I actually ended up wanting to have f more control over my coffee. And I ended up roasting coffee in hot air popcorn poppers from like the 80s. Um, it's actually a very common way to get into roasting. It was fun. It was a blast. I did all that. I moved on. Um, bought a small one pound roaster and I've been using that pretty much ever since. I really learned a lot about coffee and I loved giving coffee away to friends and family and, and different people that were just like, you know, wow, you know, this is really good. And, and of course it's really good, you know. It's, it's a fresh coffee versus, you know, something that's mass produced that's definitely not fresh and they're looking to cut cost on the price of beans right from the start so they don't get the best inventory. Once I got on social media and started talking about coffee, the coffee I can make you know in a one pound quantity depending on how sunny the day is because I'm completely on solar power um, it, it just wasn't feasible um, so I ended up partnering with a small roaster um, I actually had to wait for him to get his facilities before I could even start partnering um, you know because he wasn't able to produce coffee for me at that time um, he has a facility he's a one-man operation small company I'm his biggest drop ship customer by far I'm I think one of three of his dropship customers and I definitely uh, I definitely don't move a lot of inventory for him but he's just getting started he's a super cool guy he's going he's, he's becoming he's going from a drop shipper to like a business partner because he's like helping me in every step of the process from website work to everything else um, and we're both just super passionate about coffee and I particularly just love supporting small businesses at the same time I love telling people, hey, there's really good coffee out there, but I don't want to overdo it. Um, so I don't want to like overwhelm you guys with tasting notes and all kinds of, you know, origins. All this is, you know, super flavorful and extra chocolatey with hints of floral. Like most people don't get that. Um, yes, I can eventually, as time goes on, I've been able to pick out the different flavors and tasting notes. Some people just want a good cup of coffee and you're the people I'm going for. So, I just want to drop a couple uh, helpful hints that will hopefully help you in your coffee experience. Um, and I have a notepad because I'm not good at memorizing stuff in the proper order. Um, so yeah, first of, first of all, freshly roasted beans. Um, most of the beans on the store shelf are probably over six months old. Um, and they've been ground months ago as well, so that really doesn't help anything. Some you can grind fresh at the store, which is actually, you know, definitely a step up. But the beans themselves are definitely, uh, definitely going to be stale. They're stale after about two weeks. Um, you can push it to three and four weeks, you know, ideally within two weeks of the roast date. Um, after that, the most important thing about coffee 
is still not equipment. Equipment's at the bottom of the list. I'll keep going. Um, is grind size. Um, depending on how you brew, if you brew espresso like I made, um, you're going to actually want a very fine grind. You need it out of a conical burr grinder. You need a good quality grinder. Um, and you don't actually have to grind it fresh. It's better for you to have the proper ground coffee not ground fresh than it is to have freshly ground coffee ground the incorrect way. Um, so if you have a drip maker, you want to get, which is a regular coffee maker, drip maker is the fancy word for coffee maker. Um, so you just want to get um, the regular medium grind. You want to do a coarse grind for stuff like a French pet, French press, um, stuff like that. But generally speaking, you're going to want to get the medium grind. Um, and the next thing, next thing, freshly ground coffee. So after that, we're on number three. Freshly ground coffee is important, but proper grind size is more important. So you can skip the fresh part if you don't have a grinder that uh, grinds uh, suitably for you. Um, the next thing on the list I actually think is water quality. Um, you want to have good quality water. I tell folks to uh, experiment with it, you know. Um, when, when you're messing around with your coffee game and trying to get a better cup of coffee, try different types of water, you know. Nothing wrong with douches and tap water. Spring water probably is going to be one of your best bets. Distilled water is pretty much guaranteed not going to be that good. Um, you actually, you know, removing all the impurities just removes something from the coffee. Um, most of my coffee is done with uh, my rainwater collection um, and I've, I've definitely uh, experimented with different things and I'll continue to experiment with water um, but that's that's uh, something that's pretty important. The next thing um, I would say roast method. Um, all the coffee on the website is actually air roasted which leads to uh, less acidity and makes it less bitter generally speaking. So when people talk about coffee being too acidic, I absolutely love to reach those people with this coffee. Um, the other option that, that most people um, encounter, most roasting is drum roasting. Um, and you, you end up with more of a roast flavor. Um, so some people prefer the roast flavor. There's not like a right or wrong answer here. There's just a difference there. I have air roasted coffee. I think you can actually taste the bean better and I think it's less acidic. Um, just just my uh, my opinion on that and the last and final thing that's important for your coffee is your um, equipment um, so whatever method you're currently making coffee you want to step up your game do all these things in order start with the beans and work your way down once you've got the best coffee you can make out of your current coffee maker step up the coffee maker um, French press is a decent option there's pour overs there's zero presses um, some people are just never going to go beyond a, a drip maker and so again going for average folks that just need a little better coffee experience nothing wrong with a drip maker get a quality drip maker that gets the temperature of the water right um, I don't really have specific equipment recommendations I'm actually not that big into the equipment side of it um, I just know that the temperature of water can be important um, but it's, it's way down the bottom of the list well beyond um, some of this other stuff Hopefully this video has been informative. I hope that uh, you appreciate the uh, small business aspect between myself being on a homestead and just being passionate about coffee to the guy that actually does the roasting for me. Um, I hope that uh, this is a positive experience for you. I hope you purchase some coffee. If you would like more coffee content besides this intro video, definitely let me know. Hit that uh, like button on the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, go to narrowwayhomestead.com and purchase some coffee. Appreciate it.